Hi, I'm Mark Weiner, and this is the Mentorship Challenge. The guests that we've interviewed on this program, as well as all the successful people I know, have one thing in common. They've all benefited from having a mentor. This program has been designed to give you the same opportunity. On our website, we have hundreds of hours that have been pledged by a wide array of people, all of whom look like the who's who of business and professions in South Africa. So if you want to have the opportunity that they have had by having a mentor, register on our website now. If you delay, it'll be something that you will regret later in life, believe me. With me now is Ander Makwanda, who epitomizes somebody who's tried and tried again until he was successful. Ander, welcome and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Mark, for having me. Uh, AM and, and Ander are in the electrical supply business. You do power lines. Uh, later, you do solar power, you do wind, uh, anything to do with energy, and as the guy that you go to. You're in South Africa, you're in uh, Zambia, you're in uh, Addis Ababa, you, you're in a number of countries, named as Forbes, one of 30 under 30s, a host of other awards. Uh, but more importantly, I should imagine that the balance sheet is looking <laughs> a lot stronger than it was in 2010. Well, um, in terms of um, the balance sheet, yes, it is looking good. Um, I think the company is stable now um, because we have sig significantly grown as the company. Um, because when I started the company, it was um, a single division company. It was a consulting, AM engineering consulting. Then later on in 2012, that's when I decided to actually change the company, expand the, 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 the company into a six division back then, but now we are currently a seven division company. And each division operates as a separate entity, but under the, the, the AM group. And that advice in order to expand and have these different divisions came to you from a mentor? Yes, um, I had a mentor that was um, offered through the SAB Kickstart program. Uh, the mentor was Anton Russell, um, he's from Cape Town. Um, is actually the one that helped me to see the vision of expanding the operations and also expanding into Africa. So it came through the mentor. That's why I value mentorship more than anything. It's, it's so important and, and for our viewers. Here again is a typical example of how one person had such a huge impact on, on Anders business. I mean, at that time when you were consulting, how many people did you employ? Uh, there were six. Six. Yes. So you've grown in, from 2012 uh, to now, say, in the space of five years, from six people employing 220. And I know one of your visions is to just keep growing that and to create employment, particularly from the Eastern Cape where you grew up. Um, by 2020, the idea is to have at least close to, close to 1,000 employees because we want to change um, the, the communities that we, we, we grew up from. Because I grew up from rural areas. I only came to the city to study. <laughs> so. that, that's really an amazing story. It's fantastic. So if you had met your mentor, the guy that you mentioned four years earlier, uh, your life could have, I don't think it would have taken a different direction. I yes. just think you would have been yes. further down the line because you would have saved those three or four years. Exactly. And, and the money that you lost. I would have because also like most of the uh, mistakes that we commit as young entrepreneurs is that we think that our businesses will come to us or tenders um, are the only source of business. And that is not true because opportunities are out there, but we have to go to them. You have to be out there knocking on the doors and chasing the opportunities. True. And That's even true. there, it, if your hit rate is one in 10, so yes. no, 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 no. Well, you're getting closer to the yes. Yes. Because there is one that, that's going to come. Exactly, that is uh, true. If you were going to give advice to some of the young people out there listening to you now, what advice would you give young people who are going to go out, hopefully start a business, start a profession. So you need to be prepared, you need to have a mentor. That one is, is no, it's, it's a no-go zone. You, have, you must have a mentor. Because if you make mistakes, no one is going to tell you. 
and you learn the hard way, you'll end up losing money, a hard-earned money. But you have to be determined, you, you have to be prepared to work hard, and above all, you have to believe in yourself. So I'm saying to people out there, if you're not prepared to work hard, if you don't believe that you have it in you to succeed, don't try, don't. stay on a job. But if you have those two attributes, then dream because your dreams will become a reality. You must be willing to work 20 hours. I'm not going to be even say like work 15 hours or extra hours. No, you must be willing to work 20 hours. You're working because, when you're sleeping. You're exactly. You, you must be willing to sleep at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. and then wake up at 9, 9 a.m. Go to work, go and meet clients. And also you must be willing to learn. And it, it's amazing how much you learn by listening and, and, and by being prepared to take the criticism because people don't like criticism. You must be willing to listen to that criticism because from that criticism comes positives, comes things that you can learn about yourself, from yourself. But if you're not, if you're not getting criticized, then how are you going to know like who you are, what you, do, what you have done wrong? You must be willing, whether it's negative or positive, but take the positive out of that criticism. And the bad news is you never know everything. Exactly. You're learning every day, every week. You're learning something that is else. Why, that is why I'm employing like so many people. I'm, I'm not employing so many people because I want to, because I don't know everything. There are people that are actually clever than me. There are people that are smarter than me. But I need those people in order to make my dream to come through. You know what you're, what, what you're really good at. You have to employ really good people to do what you're not good at. Yes, that is true. And uh, it's really been a fantastic story. I'm going to be watching your career Thank with you. interest. You've really taken mentorship on board. It's played an important role in your life. So now comes the crunch part of this program. So how many hours can I squeeze out of you to mentor some of our young would-be well, entrepreneurs? Well, as much as like I'm busy and stuff, but I always make time like um, to help other entrepreneurs that are coming up. So like I can give you the maximum hours that you normally ask for. 30 hours? That is. Fantastic, thank you very much for your 30 hours. We really appreciate it. Do you have somebody, a friend, a colleague, or somebody that you think would be a good mentor to some of the people out there who they would benefit from? Um, Nella Grata. Um, we, we are partners in, tele, in one of the telecoms company that we run together. She also runs, she's also in the renewable energy space. We will tell her you've pledged 30 hours. Yeah. She has to do at least that, maybe better. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you, a real inspiration to see somebody who was determined, took the knock, got back up, and from there has just moved forward unbelievably. It's been a pleasure so, and an honor to be part of this. a token of my appreciation for your appearing, a copy of my book. Thank you, making thank my you, mark. thank you so much. If you would like to be mentored by Anda, and I'm sure there are dozens of you who would like to be because he certainly has a wealth of experience on how to do it and how not to do it. <laughs> uh, please go to our website and register. Aside from Anda and the other guests who've appeared on the show, there are hundreds of hours that have been pledged by a whole range of people. Don't delay, it could change your life. Welcome back. I'm now with Dr. Teddy Bletcher. And no, he's not Harry Potter, but he is a wizard. Teddy, welcome. Thanks a lot, Mark. You don't have the ability to create magic spells, but certainly what you have done is in a sense magic. Thank you. And I can't tell you how much admiration I have mm. for what you have done and what you have achieved. Thank you, people, I appreciate that. People sometimes think in the context of South Africa, oh well, maybe I can do something, but what difference can one person make? And mm. you mm. are just a person who has made so much difference Thank in so many people's lives that I used to call you nuts, but now, <laughs> now I think you're just a bit eccentric. So for the benefit of the, benefit of the viewers, Teddy is an actuary. 
He worked for a company that specialized in mining. He was doing exceptionally well. This was in the early 90s. And if you don't mm -hmm. mind me saying so, in those days you were earning in excess of a million rand That's a year. That's right, yeah. And mm. then you decided things were maybe not so good in South Africa and you were going off to greener pastures uh, right. to America. Uh, yeah, I was 27 years old. Apartheid ended in 1994. 1995, I, I was thinking to leave the country like so many people who didn't think there was a future in South Africa. And we hear it all day, every day. There's no future. We've always heard there's no future for the country. And um, I, I managed to organize a fantastic job in, in the United States. I organized a backup job that was in New York. I organized a backup in Washington. And then in case that didn't work out, I also had organized two jobs in New Zealand and two jobs in Sydney and Australia, all great jobs, very high paying jobs. As you say, I was earning 1.3 million Rand. I packed up everything, 43 boxes, put them in my mom's cellar in Emerentia in Johannesburg. And I bought my air ticket. I went down to Cape Town, said goodbye to my oldest brother, who was the only sibling out of seven in my family who was still in the country. Everyone else had left. America, Australia, England, everywhere. And I was also just set to go. And then two weeks before I had this change of heart and I stayed up all night one night and I'll never forget that night. And it, it didn't just happen that night. It built for many weeks before that when I was thinking, why am I leaving this country? Why are we all running away? You know, it is a chicken thing to do. And if we really, you know, if we believe in ourselves and if we believe that, you know, it's possible to change the world, we need to prove it, we need to do it. And I, I thought like, um, you know, maybe I'll do this for one month, stay in South Africa, but that's turned into 23 years now. I just turned 50 this year. I've spent 23 years working in the communities. You came from a family of Lithuanian immigrants. That's right. Poor. Yeah, that's okay. exactly but right. But with a big, big emphasis on education. That's it. Education was a religion in my family. And my father was an amazing man in that way because we had nothing growing up. Uh, we slept, uh, me and my three older brothers, we slept on the floor on foam mattresses, one little room. I never had new clothes. When I went, uh, we went to the best private schools, but I would go to the, like my school wearing these old safari suits that yes. had been handed from Mark to David yes. to Greg to me, pen stains on them. And, uh, but every cent went into books and getting a proper education. So, so you had this, this drive, and I think between your, yourself and your seven siblings, there's something like 30 degrees. Yeah, it's about 34, 35 degrees, degrees. exactly. And then when you were <laughs> yeah. gonna go to university, I think your father gave you two choices, yeah. lecture and doctor, and you didn't like blood. That's so, right, that's exactly so you right. Became, so you became, you became an actuary. That's exactly then, right. Then you, you yeah. decide you're not going to America, and then you do something, which for me seemed crazy. You go off into yeah. townships, I think Alexander Township, and you've that's got it. this belief yes. that meditation yes. is going to help kids yes. uh, be uh, better learners and uh, reduce crime. That's right. That, that's when I thought you were nuts. <laughs> so, so you do that for a while and then yes. that gives birth to right. Cedar. Yes. Yeah, so we started the first uh, institution with Cedar in the year 2000. In fact, it, yeah, I think it was 1999, at the end of 99, you gave us that building and it was a fascinating story because we wrote out to 350 school principals to see if they would send any of their brightest and best students to come for a free university education. We didn't have a building, we didn't have a book, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a teacher, we didn't have accreditation, we didn't have a computer, we had nothing. I remember the accreditation, yeah, my had, daughter was Yeah, that, your, your daughter got involved. Yeah. We had absolutely nothing. And if you didn't save us with that building two weeks before we were about to open, we would have been in deep water. <laughs> I was thinking maybe we're gonna to have to get a piece of land and put up a tent and start the first tented university. Anyway, from when we started then in the year 2000, we've now put over 17,000 kids, um, first in CEDA and then now in the Marish Institute, through higher education and got them into jobs thereafter. These kids are doing brilliantly. We've had um, over a 95% job placement rate. So you yeah. say of these, kids, the 95% of the 17,000 yeah. are now employed and earning? 17,050 are now working and earning over a billion rand in combined salaries. They, they will earn over 27 billion in their working careers. And it's brought all these families out of poverty into the middle class. So we've seen students coming from very, very difficult situations, tiny little houses, so, so difficult, Teddy, yes. If you can do this, yes. okay? With limited resources, yes, uh, and, and you can do, do this. It with nothing. We with started nothing. with nothing. Yeah. But even now, it, yes. it's a miracle. So why is it that government 
can't do this. Okay. You know what it is, eh, Mark? It's like you know. I mean, you've built this massive property company, and how did you do it from nothing? Well, you come with new ideas, new ways of thinking about how to put a portfolio together, etc. We've, we've tried to rethink how universities are done. We think this is the age of technology. We think that you can leverage technology very, very differently. It can bring down costs a lot. It can bring up quality. We've thought about how can we leverage the students themselves. So we get our students to run their own university. They do cleaning and cooking and all this kind of thing, which we say to them, any job has meaning and respect. If you do it with your whole heart and love and respect, you will grow and you will grow. So our students look after the institution themselves. So we've reinvented everything, and how we finance it. We have our own call center. So the students get to answer phones. We're about to start a massive contract for a big national global brand. I won't, won't mention it, but that contract alone will bring 10 million Rand a year into the institution and into the students' pockets as well, that they will earn while they're studying. This is fantastic, because what we hear now yes. is fees must fall. Yes. But not that I'm prepared to do anything yes. to, to subsidize my university education. That's it. Uh, I know when I lectured, you also had a, a business that the students were wrapping parcels and That's right. delivering pamphlets and all, all kinds of, of things. So all you, of that. You, you They're have running the their own businesses. So what does it cost the student to come to the institute? It costs a student. Now, this is going to probably shock people because people think it's not possible. You, you've got grandkids. How much does it cost to send a child to a creche these days in South Africa? Uh, 60 or 70,000 a year. Yeah, something. yeah. Two, three, four thousand yeah. rand a month yeah. for a little, tiny little yeah. toddler. Yeah. Our students pay only 200 rand a month and they come for eight hour, uh, They come for 10 hours a day, from eight o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night. They get food every day, they get clothing if necessary, counseling, leadership, international degree, all these other programs, etc. And they pay only 200 rand a month, so they pay 2,000 rand in a year, so less than a tenth of going to crash. So I often joke with my friends that they must take their kids out of crash and put them in university, uh, they'll save a lot. Okay, so I now want to be the magician. Yes. Boom. <laughs> you the Minister of Education. Yes. Okay. I'd love that. What would you do? I, I would do a bunch of things, but 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 firstly, we, we have to start controlling the cost structures of education. We have to also start to say that the people who can afford education must pay for it. The people who can't afford it, let's find a way to help them. But once they're successful, they must pay back. We do something called pay it forward, where we will help you, but you in turn are going to help your brother or your sister, and it's contracted, and we follow up on it. There's too much government money that's put into education that students are meant to pay back, but they never ever pay back. So we've got to have proper collections. We've got to manage the money properly, even if it means we're going to take it from people's taxable income once they're earning, like is done in Australia. So in terms of financing, in terms of We've got to get rid of like unprofitable programs that are not working. We've got to leverage technology. We've got to get the students more involved in their own education. And we've got to have sharing between the universities. Why should every university develop their own economics course, their own finance course? It's a big waste. You've got all these professors being paid a fortune, um, all developing very, very similar stuff. Most, a lot of the research that we uh, get done in our academic institutions neither ends poverty nor does it develop a lot of intellectual property or lead to commercialization. So we've got to focus where the spending goes to actually lead to more education for more people through sharing resources and better using resources okay. with the graduates. And, and at your institute, meditation is... Meditation is sacrosanct. Sacrosanct. You have well, to do meditation. You see, it's not about meditation per se. It is about the fact that every human being has got so much genius inside them. We say every student is a genius waiting to happen. But so many young people in our country have got very low levels of self-confidence. They don't believe in themselves. They don't think they can achieve great things. So our slogan is you were born to be great. And the only role of our institution is to help our students to realize their greatness so that they can achieve marvelous things in the world using their potential. So meditation is a mechanism for helping these young people learn to love and respect themselves, to deal with the tremendously low levels of self-esteem and low confidence, and help build them into strong, independent thinkers who know themselves, who know their potential, and to realize that potential. And it works. We do it because it, it works. It certainly works. <laughs> 17,050 yeah, and students and counting a testament to that. That's right. So Teddy, al along the way, becoming an actuary, going through this incredible journey, have you had mentors? 
You know, it's interesting because the guy who introduced us, and you were just saying Errol Gorman was one of your mentors. Errol was one of my mentors from when I was about, I don't know, five years old. I met him through one of my best friends who now lives in Australia. And, you know, every single time you'd meet this guy, he would tell you some pearl of wisdom that would change your thinking. And I, I've had a number of mentors. You know, when we started up Cedar, Cedar Nick Benadol uh, was, was building Gibbs. He had come out of its business school. He's been a fantastic mentor to us, you know, how to get things going. I'd say in pretty much in a number of areas of what we've done, um, I've had the most fantastic mentors. And it certainly helped you. No, help there's you no, you, you know, you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. I don't think you can do it without good mentors. If you were to give advice to any of the people out there who are watching the show, what would it be? My, my advice would be you can solve any problem. There's always an answer to every single problem. It's just maybe you haven't found it yet. So every day, any issue I'm trying to solve, if I can't solve it yet, then I know I'm the problem. It's not that there isn't an answer. There's always, always an answer. And so I, I, I would just say to people just to have hope. There's, there's no problem we if can't solve. Will. All we need is the will. All we need to will and working together and, and, and working and I'll together. I'll go to the stage where I say to people, you know, we just have to forget about where we are. We That's better look it. forward. Stop looking backwards. <laughs> yeah, look forward. 100%. Uh, one of the things that I loved when I was doing a little bit of research yes. was the Albert Einstein quote. Everything is a miracle. I love that. Or nothing is a miracle. The choice is yours. The choice is yours, so yeah. I'm going to say that again for the benefit of our viewers. Yes. Everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. The choice is yours. It's 100%. So to our viewers, we have created opportunities for you. We've got the most unbelievable list of mentors, people like Teddy, Brian Joffe, a whole lot of people who've volunteered their valuable hours on this program. The choice is yours, okay? 100%. Take advantage of the opportunity yes. and it could be a miracle. That's it, 100%. Teddy, Life is beautiful. If people go for it and they link out with what's out there, I mean, anything is possible. To say the least, your enthusiasm is infectious. Thank you. Uh, I never Thank stop you, learning. I never stop enjoying. And you're a mentor. You've achieved unbelievable Interacting things. with you. Yeah. Uh, it's really been wonderful talking to you. But before I let you go. Thank you. Uh, there's one thing we have to do, which I nearly forgot about because I was enjoying this so much. <laughs> you, you bubbly and you great. Thank but you. what you're really here for yes. is to tell us how many hours of your exceptionally valuable time <laughs> you are going to give to yes. people who would like to be to be mentees. mentors to be mentees so i'm, I'm already uh, uh, mentoring some people and uh, so let me just think like um uh, without my wife killing me so she's already saying how can i take on more and how can i take on more you but just take away this time yeah. from her so another 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 five hours in a month I could mentor. Five hours a month, six months, 30 hours? 30 hours. Fantastic. Thank Done. you for that. Thank you. Okay, but you're still not off the hook. <laughs> now, now what we want from you is to challenge one of your colleagues or friends yes. uh, to give us some of their time. Okay. Great. This is outside of, yes. of anything else that they might be doing. Yes. So who would you like to challenge? So I, I want to challenge my best friend, Paul Bacher, who you do know very well. Do you know Paul? Teddy, it's been an absolute delight having you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hmm. Somewhere I'm still between nuts and, uh, <laughs> and eccentric, but, but notwithstanding that, I, I, I thank you not only on my behalf, but thank on behalf you. of everybody in South Africa Truly for appreciate it. the inroads that you've made hmm. into, into our education system. And if I have a vote, you'll certainly be the next Minister of Education. Ah, oh, love that. Thank you. It's a token of my appreciation. Thank I would you, really man. like to thank you, give you a copy thank of you. my book, Making thank My you. Mark. Brilliant. Uh, Fantastic, eh? It's got nothing about education. This looks like Winston Churchill. Is that you? Winston Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Great. Good. So it's really been great. Thank you, Mark. And, and I, I just want to say quickly, just once again, anybody out there looking for education, who's struggling, who's suffering, please be in touch. We would love, love to help. For those people who want to further education yes. and make things, we will get your contact details onto Good. our website. We'll love and to we love to help really, them. We really love that. Even That's if they've got nothing they can come to us, we'd love to help them. Can, can I come? You, def you don't need it. Eh? <laughs> if you would like to be Good. mentored by Teddy or any of our other incredible mentors, please visit our website and register as a mentee. 
There are hundreds of hours available and it's building all the time. Please, you have the opportunity, seize it, and it could be the first step that you take on the road to success. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful.